Hi, Rachel. Hi, Marie. Here we are, episode 38. Welcome to our show. We are your hosts, Marie and Rachel. And each week we share a few library books on a theme and how to find them on the citywide digital library available on the SOAR app. Our show is released Fridays at 3 p.m. on YouTube and IGTV. And Marie, tell us what we are talking about this week. So our theme this week is new releases. So these have either come out in the last few months. We have Tokyo Ever After, The Gilded Ones, The Cost of Knowing, and Somebody's Daughter. And I get to go first. Okay, so as I tried to tease everyone, yes, I did read a romance. Yes, it has a princess theme. Yes, I do that. So Tokyo Ever After is about Azumi. And Azumi is a totally typical Japanese American high school student. If you can have a totally typical Japanese American high school student. She has a cool group of misfit friends. She has a, a kind and loving mother and a diner where she's a regular. But Azumi always feels like she doesn't fit in. It isn't easy to be the only Japanese American in her small Northern California town. And so Azumi is shortened to Izzy just because it's easier that way. But Azumi does have a mystery. Azumi doesn't know who her father's identity is. And when she asks her mother, she only gets that it was like somebody in college until Azumi accidentally learns his first name. Her bestie takes the clue and begins to search his whereabouts. And it is revealed that Izumi's father is the crown prince of Japan. And so this is where the whirlwind starts. Azumi's invited to stay with the royal family for two weeks. She's able to finally see the country she always dreamed of. But royal life is not all that it's cracked up to be. Um, and since this is a fairy tale romance, there is a hot young bodyguard that serves as a love interest. And of course, a tiara. Um, but Izumi makes some serious cultural blunders that get her in a big trouble. So why I loved it. This book definitely puts the princess trope in a clearly non-Western setting, which I loved. And it definitely navigates the place that many BIPOC people experience of being caught between two worlds. Um, like for Izzy, it's not being American enough when she's in America and not being Japanese enough when she's in Japan. Uh, the book is actually a great page turner. And my favorite part is the second part is when she returns to the United States and you get to see this great personal growth and it focuses on her relationship with Paris. So I say, go read it and enjoy it. And the cover is gorgeous. I wanna make some paper art like this. Oh, I know. I was gonna say the cover is really great. There's another cover that they shouldn't use because it's not as great. The next one is The Gilded Ones by Namina Forna. And this is the start of a high fantasy trilogy, I think, that I can totally get into. The storyline initially gave me a little bit of the lottery or Hunger Games vibes, but then takes a more unique turn. So every year, the teen girls in the kingdom of Oterra, a very patriarchal kingdom, prepare for the ritual ritual of purity that determines whether they can join their communities as pure women. If they are found to have their blood run gold instead of red, then they will be cast out and branded as an impure monster. And that's just what happens to our main character, 16 year old Deka. She is put into a jail cell and they kill her, but she comes back over and over again, the same thing happens until one day she is freed by a woman and taken to the capital to be trained with the other Alaki. I don't know if I'm saying that right. This is what happens when you read a book and you make up the word pronunciation in your head. It turns out that in addition to their golden cursed blood, they have healing properties, incredible strength and unmatched speed, which is then used um, for good instead of evil, or so we hope. I thought the underlying themes of feminism, gender inequality or equality 
body positivity, diversity, inclusive sexuality, queer representation, dispelling the meaning of purity, all made this book so much more interesting than the popular fantasy novels of my young adulthood. Somehow these real life themes make this hard to put down, even for those of us who usually prefer realistic fiction over fantasy. That's me. Uh, I feel like this book came out very quietly in February, but I just recently heard about it and also heard that it will be optioned for film and also has a gorgeous cover. Yeah, I feel like we might have traded bodies this week because you're doing, <laughs> uh, anyway, that's, that's what happens, folks. You can read a lot of different things. And here we are. We're here at the cost of knowing with my girl, Brittany Morris. Um, she also wrote Slay, which I hearted. Uh, this is, this is different. So 16-year-old um, Alex. Uh, the main character in this book, he tries to be perfect. So he's like the best employee at the ice cream shop. He tries to be the best boyfriend. He tries to be the best brother, but there's always a but. Ever since his parents' death, Alex can see into the future of anything he touches. So when he touches the ice cream scoop, he sees himself scooping more ice cream in the future. And when he touches his car, he sees it many years from now totaled and underwater. And most problematic, when he touches his girlfriend, Talia, he sees them breaking up. And rather than giving him an advantage of life, it's giving him a lot of anxiety. He sees his gift as a curse that does not allow him to live a normal life. And the complication, if that wasn't enough, um, happens when Alex touches a photo of his brother Isaiah and he gets a vision of his brother's imminent death and his of course his anxiety goes to the truth. He now has to um, race against time, death, circumstances, and he has to go back in time to grapple with the past, the present, the future, and what it means to be a young black man in the America, in America in the present. I'm not gonna give you all the deets away because it will kind of like spoil how it's unfolded, but it's quite uh, engaging. So what I loved, because I loved a lot about this book, um, I love this portrait of black boys that was, that were, black boys as sensitive and vulnerable and complex and I really found refreshing its focus on brotherly love and the way that it tackled racism. It gave me a whole new look at those things. Um, my girl, Brittany Morris, she's got mad skills and she's really able to weave together the multiple plot lines um, with her very crisp and humorous dialogue. I think that's one thing she excels back. And her dialogue for me always really rang true and realistic. So I would say y'all should run out and buy this book and read it or check it out from Sora. The next book is Somebody's Daughter, a memoir by Ashley C. Ford. I have been following Ashley C. Ford in her career as a journalist. You can find her pieces in magazines. She's interviewed Serena Williams, Missy Elliott, Janelle Monet, all that. Marie told me before the show that she also has a podcast. Um, so I've been following her since before I moved to Brooklyn and I had secret hopes of one day running into her, but alas, she has moved back to the Midwest. So this is on the table for now. This is her, mid her memoir of growing up in the Midwest in Indiana, which I think would classify perfectly as new adult, a genre I recently learned about, a coming of age and reflection of her childhood and her young adulthood published as adult, but with very high YA interest. Ashley grew up with an incarcerated father and an overburdened mother. She touches on issues in this memoir from growing up in a black family in the center of America, to body image, to verbal and sexual assault, to her own sexuality, to her confidence and her current marriage. And although it's not the whole storyline, one of the most personally emotional and special parts of this book 
was how Ashley comes to reckon with and forgive her parents, both as individuals and humans in this complex world. I read in one review by Roxanne Gay, I mean, who doesn't want Roxanne Gay to review your book, uh, that Ashley has, quote, her ability to see people for who they are without looking away is powerful. I listened to this on audiobook before it came out. It was released uh, earlier this week, and I would highly recommend it, especially on audiobook. It's narrated by the author herself, and I really felt like I was just sitting on a couch across the room, sharing a cup of tea, listening to her share her world with me. This book is really something special. And maybe the first time I've read a book before Marie. Here are the announcements. All books, of course, are available. You don't have to buy it on the NYC DOE Citywide Digital Library on the Sora Reading App. Or you can also use the Libby app with the Libby card. And if you are new to eBooks, please reach out to your librarian. Audiobook Sync this week is going to Paris. If you don't know, Audiobook Sync is free audiobooks. You can download during each week of the summer and have them for the next 98 years. So a great way to increase your digital library. Thank you for watching. View the show notes at bit.ly backslash W2RTW 2020. And you can join us next week for audiobook month. Yeah. Yay.